The good news is the Let's Encrypt demo tools are out. The bad news is, according to the spec, currently they must run on port 443, which is, of course, HTTPS. What's the problem with that? Well, you probably want to run your web server on port 443 the very web server that you want to get your certificates for. And it's not like you can just stop your web server, run the Let's Encrypt client, and then start your web server again once you get the certificates, because the process takes a significant amount of time. We need to be able to solve this problem so we can run our web server and get certificates. And HAProxy lets us do that. So first off, I'm just going to go over here and um, you can watch my previous video. I've, I went through the process of installing the Let's Encrypt clients and testing it out, getting certificates and whatnot. Um, but I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to start up a web server. So I'm going to do sudo, uh, actually I did npm install dash g serve https. That's already been done, so I'm not going to do it again. Um, but this is just a very simple static HTTPS service that you can specify certificates for and stuff. So I'm just going to say we're going to run this on port uh, 8443 and we're going to pretend like this is our actual web server. So I'm going to give it uh, let's encrypt certs because those are already installed uh, for let's encrypt.moo.com. So this is just a junk domain. Um, and then I'm going to serve the directory slash temp. Okay, so uh, this is just a, a bogus web server, um, just so that I've got one. Oh, and I need to sudo that. And actually, you know what? Let me let me do this. I'll do it the the hard way. Okay, try this again. Server name. Uh, let's encrypt.moo.com, and then I would do key, and I'd be passing Etsy. Let's encrypt. Um, live let's encrypt dot moo dot com slash priv key dot pem and then so I don't have to do this painstaking typing over and over again I'll just copy that for cert and it would be cert dot pem and then copy that for chain and it'll be chain dot pem and then back to dash d temp Okay, so there's my long drawn out version if you can follow that line across the screen, which is a little hard to do. Anyway, so I hit enter um, and now I'm serving this. So I'm gonna go ahead and test and see what I've got there. And I had already accepted this invalid certificate. So, or, mm, it's not invalid is it's a testing certificate rather anyway so now I can see the contents of slash temp so I know that my web server is working and we can pretend that that web server is on you know we want it to be accessible not we don't have to pretend we want it to be accessible via 443 so I'm gonna hit control Z and BG to background that server so now it's running in the background I can my terminals free to for me to mess around with it again um, so I'm going to install HA proxy and uh, I, I have to get version 1.5 plus, so I can't use the default that comes with uh, Ubuntu or Raspbian. I need to install it from uh, the PPA. So, uh, whoops, let me just go ahead and follow this process here. Just a bunch of copy and paste um, that I took from one of those blogs where somebody talks about the PPA they use to install something. So I imported the key, I'm going to do the updates, um, or I, as part of the PPS, PPA process it imported the key and added the repository, now I do the update, and now I'm going to install a proxy. Um, and then in the article here I explain kind of how to do it without using the service, just doing it um, all uh, running in the foreground but for this demo I'm, I'm just going to use the service way since I uh, I know that this works I've already gone through it I don't need to do the debugging steps really um, but what I do need to do is I have to restart the logging service um, 
because for whatever reason the installation doesn't restart it and without it being restarted I wouldn't see the logs um, and then okay so all of this I, I'll explain a proxy now all of this is a config file and this stuff is all the defaults I it, it's not really that important um, so I'm just gonna leave it alone here's the good stuff so what Haproxy allows us to do, or HA proxy, however you pronounce it, um, is we define a front end that we want to listen on. So it's it's like Nginx, except that it works at the TCP level uh, as well as the HTTP level, and it is not a file server or a web server. It is uh, a TCP and HTTP proxy, uh, but not um, it, not a web server. But I define a front end and I can bind to port 443. Now it's important to note that Haproxy will double bind. So if you happen to be running the, the HA proxy service in the background, like it, it's going to start automatically when you install it, and then you go to run uh, your own version of it in the foreground, that will create problems for you. And I explained that in the article. But that's a very important note. Now what this config is saying, uh, the, the foo here, everything that's prefixed with foo is an arbitrary name. And I just wanted to make that clear because there's things that are, you know, exactly named and there are things that are arbitrary. So things that are arbitrary I try to just prefix with foo, so it makes that simple. Um, so the front end is going to bind, it's binding in TCP mode, not in HTTP mode. And I'm not doing anything, I'm not doing anything to handle the TLS, uh, HTTPS certificates. So I'm just basically taking raw packets is what I'm working with. And this line here isn't saying that we're going to wait five seconds to do anything. It's saying we're going to wait up to five seconds um, before we take the default action. So when it gets a TCP connection, it's going to try to inspect the first packet. And there's some brief amount of time between when you get a connection and then when the first packet comes in. Uh, on a really terrible network connection, it could take seconds, but generally it's like it's right there, right? Um, anyway, so the second line here says immediately accept the connection if or as soon as you can match the uh, SSL hello type one. Don't exactly know what that means. Copy and pasted it, but it's basically TLS sends a hello packet, and because we still call TLS SSL, it calls it SSL whatever. Um, now, the next part, this is important, all requests for Let's Encrypt certificates must be some random name dot acme dot invalid. So this line here basically lets me define a variable, foo app let's encrypt, uh, which is either going to be true or false. That's what this ACL thing is basically, is like Access control list is what it seems like it stands for, but it basically sets a variable to true or false. And so rec.sslsni means I'm checking the server name indication because that's unencrypted in the TLS packet. Um, and then dash m means match and end means match the end. And then I'm passing the argument. So it's going to match basically wildcard for dot acme dot invalid, which is what we want. If that matches, so use backend. Uh, foo, BK, for some reason it seems like BK and FT are the common conventions in HA proxy for backend and frontend that I've seen other people's config files. Anyway, so I'm going to use the backend for Let's Encrypt if this variable uh, was true. And I think I could probably actually just put this thing in brackets, like is done right here, um, and not even have the variable set, but whatever, that's how I did it. And everything else is going to fall back to the default backend. Um, so it's going to come in on port 443 and it's going to go to one of these backends. Now the backends are defined as some other server that's listening locally. So I can have my Let's Encrypt application uh, will run on port 6433. I'll show you how to do that. And then my uh, default web server will run on 8443 so I'm already doing that let me just go ahead and copy the important part of this config file everything under the good stuff and I'm going to sudo vim etsy uh, hiproxy config 
I'm going to hit shift G that's taking me all the way down to the bottom make sure that I'm in paste mode and then boom paste the whole thing nice and easy all right now I need to stop the HA proxy service and I always like to kill it because when you're goofing around and you accidentally leave more than one process running it really kills you so making sure that it's not running and then um, just for testing purposes I'm going to take localhost.acme.valid which would never be a random uh, sequence of characters to appear um, in the the name that they use for the domains because they're you know they're random characters like xjrm47 blah 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 right um, I'm going to stick that in my host file because I want to be able to test as soon as I get the server up um, that these go one place and everything else goes to the other place right so if I like I already got my dinky web server going so I just need to well here I'm saying start it in the foreground I'll go ahead and start it in the foreground won't hurt so I'm starting it in the foreground and uh, I actually know that I don't want to do that because because I need to be able to type on my keyboard here and enter another command so I'm actually gonna start the service okay there we go so I had a little bit of a problem when I was continuing on with this tutorial so uh, excuse the big jump <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to uh, run curl against localhost and we're just gonna see that the web server that I just set up does in fact work I'm gonna have to pass the insecure flag otherwise it won't work so that's my listing of slash temp um, and then I want to show you that if I do um, whoops that domain that we put in Etsy hosts this because it matches that that one rule instead of returning back anything it'll probably just hang for a second and then die so yeah there it goes hangs for a second and then it dies because we don't actually have anything listening on that port but thus we see that the port is open the rule works so now I'm gonna go back to this demo here and I need to get back into the let's encrypt directory and so I'm going to run virtual environment then let's encrypt and I'm gonna give it my email address and the domain that I'm gonna give it I was just setting up a subdomain here this is what went wrong is last night the subdomain didn't finish setting up for like 20 minutes or something it's weird um, but anyway I I just went on freedns.afraid.org and I set up a, a subdomain for testing for a certificate that I want to get which is this let's encrypt dot uh, or I mean let's encrypt hyphen demo hyphen three dot moo dot com so that's what I'm going to use as the domain here and I think maybe it's like comma separated I don't know how you specify multiple domains but you can and for the authenticator I'm just going to let it run the standalone which means that it's going to fire up its own internal Python web server and uh, create the certificate and do all those things it needs to do and then uh, this is the critically important part here is that the standard specifies that this has to run on port 443 oops 443 uh, but this option allows us to select whatever port we want so we're going to say that it's going to run on port 63 443 but Haproxy is going to listen on 443 so it's going to work out um, also I want to be text and I want to agree to the EULA and if I didn't specify all these options then a GUI would come up and it would prompt me and ask me what I want to do about this and that but I find it easier just to I know what I want to do I'm going to specify the options and hit go so now when I run this oh and it needs a password this will take uh, maybe 10 seconds or so before it gets a reply um, but hopefully we'll see that it adds the certificate in question all right yeah 
Uh, so it doesn't show the on the first run it shows a couple more notes on this one it doesn't but if I do sudo I gotta use sudo um, because these uh, files are protected so that they can only be read by root if I look at this here's the one I did in the previous video and then here's the one I did just now so I was able to use HA proxy to successfully um, divvy up the work on port 443 between my normal web server and Let's Encrypt based on the server name indication rule. And I think that concludes our uh, session for today. Other than that, I guess I, I, I want to show you that we can use that. So with my little server, let me see if I can grab the other one. Uh, I'm going to have to do kill all. Oh, I needed to do sudo kill all No, There we go. Bam, that killed it. So now I'm going to run the server again. But I built in some options, especially for Let's Encrypt. So I'm going to put this on port 8443, just like I did before. But now I'm going to run Let's Encrypt certs. And then I'm going to give the Let's Encrypt demo 3 dot moo.com and serve chain and I explained this a little bit in the other video uh, oh and I gotta do that is root but it basically uh, it just specifies since the standard the locations for the key and the certificate and the chain are standard with let's encrypt I just put an alias option that does all of that and then the serve chain tells it to serve the chain so that when I do this for example uh, so I'm going to go to curl HTTPS uh, let's encrypt demo 3moocom I'm going to put this into a file called chain.pem and if I don't pass insecure it will complain at me because it doesn't have those certs in its chain and then I'm going to do the same thing again uh, you'll see without any insecure option it complains but then if I say hey these are the certs that you're supposed to use ca cert chain.pim now it grabs it and is perfectly happy with me so if I then kill this and get rid of the serve chain option it'll go back to default the default of serving the the index and then uh, there we are and of course um, I can open this up in my browser but I want to change the port here so it accesses a proxy and it says there's a privacy error if we look at why it's because these demo certificates um, aren't being issued by a true authority yet that won't happen until September when they switch over um, but it is the correct certificate so assuming that we trust it um, there we are okay done if this was useful for you, please go ahead and give that little thumbs up button a nice click. Also, you'll see the notes are in the comments section down below. You can either at the end of the article or right up at the top. Give it a like, tweet, plus one, whatever. Thanks.